Good morning, everyone. And I'm going to introduce you to this work we done for, with CMCC, European uh, uh, Climate, uh, Mediterranean Climate Center, uh, for the Republic of Mauritius, that asked us to produce a multi-risk assessment. Uh, in particular, it, it is focused on the hydrological hazard. It means the hazard that it comes from water. And uh, in the specific, it is... Uh, Mm, coastal inundation, so produced by sea level rise, and uh, flooding, uh, river flooding, and uh, the landslides, which is also a product of a morphological and hydrological process. So, first of all, I would like to um, introduce the characteristics of uh, small islands developing states, which is the context of which uh, also Mauritius uh, is inserted. And then uh, um, speak uh, with more details what we actually done in, uh, in Mauritius uh, with a little uh, detail on the methodology and uh, um, what the actual document uh, is aimed for. So to help the, um, the governance of the country to know, understand the problem, build their own capacity and uh, um, counter the problem or try to adapt to the problem. So this, uh, uh, as the name suggests, seeds uh, are uh, small independent states located on islands or group of, of islands. And there are 52 recognized seeds uh, spread around the world. You can see the main uh, areas where they are scattered. So the Pacific area, the Caribbean area, the Indian Ocean, and the Southern Chinese Sea. And these countries have something in common. They share some critical characteristics compared to other countries, to inland countries, such uh, a limited, uh, a small size and a limited population, as well as limited natural and socio-economical resources, uh, which often leads to uh, low resilience. And uh, resi resilience is the capacity of, uh, of a system to um, a system which is exposed to hazard to response to these stress events uh, while remaining functional, so to keep uh, working even in, uh, in extreme events and uh, natural disasters. Uh, they also have fewer options when it comes to adaptation. You cannot do all the things you usually do in uh, inland countries. So you have to choose a uh, limited uh, amount of options to implement. And uh, in the end, they have higher vulnerability to natural hazards compared to other countries. Uh, their development uh, is also hindered by the fact that uh, they, they have to front uh, higher costs Compare, uh, compared to other countries because they cannot uh, build the economy of scale. So every process where they have to implement, they spend more compared to our countries. And in the end, they suffer the highest price for climate change because they, they do not contribute much to the production of climate change because their CO2 em emissions are pretty low compared to other countries. But they pay the highest toll because they have the, the higher uh, price and the higher difficulties to face uh, regarding climate change. So our DRR Mauritius, which stands for Disaster Risk Reduction, was a fast consultancy service. It lasted for six months in the last year and was found by Japanese, Japanese Development Assistance Program through the UNDP Adaptation uh, for Africa. And our, our work starts with a general analysis of uh, the country situation and then uh, a detailed profile of the three components of hazards. So, as I said, river flooding, landslides, and coastal inundation. And the most exposed and vulnerable area have been identified and the specific action plan uh, also with a general strategy, have been uh, redacted to assist local governance in the process of adaptation. So these are, are the Republic of Mauritius. You can see on the left the coast of Madagascar. 
and uh, we have the main Mauritius Islands, uh, the second main islands, which is Rodriguez, and then two little uh, um, shoals or a group of uh, little uh, atolls, which are Agalega and St. Brandon, which are pretty far from the main country. In fact, it's a very, very, very low in population and there are almost non infrastructure. And also these, uh, these little shoals are uh, a few, um, and they don't reach much more than five meters from, uh, from the sea level. So they are high exposed to sea level rise and similar. So you can see the detailed map of the main islands of Mauritius. And uh, this framework pretty much summarizes our work. Uh, we, have, uh, we have the problem, the climate change, and we have uh, the modification of uh, natural parameters, such as precipitation and temperature patterns. And these uh, parameters affect the probability and the magnitude of uh, natural hazards. So hazard values uh, that uh, are um, simulated from uh, meteorological models, and we are going to talk later, are then uh, combined with vulnerability value. That uh, means uh, uh, the exposed elements, uh, such as households, uh, productive activities, and the infrastructures, to obtain a risk value. And uh, we are, our um, action plan works for the re reduction of uh, risk, of course, and uh, the, also the reactions of uh, vulnerability through a sensitive develop, development uh, and planning by the authorities. So the first step is to understand how climate change will work at the local scale. So we ask climate modelists to produce some regional climate scenarios to know which kind of trends we can expect uh, for both temperature and precipitation. And we can see for temperature, we have an increase of uh, 1.2, 1.5 compared to previous trends. And this, um, these forecasts are based on the uh, RCP scenarios by the new assessment report by uh, IPCC. And they are representative concentration pathways. So the, these are the graph for precipitation, which are have a higher uncertainty, but still suggest uh, um, a, 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 dec um, a change in the distribution. And in particular, there is an increase uh, in the extreme events. So even if it will rain, uh, it will be less rainfall, it will be more concentrated in fewer events. So it will be more disastrous events. Uh, so this is an example for the flood hazard. We have the uh, river basins of the Maurit main Mauritius Islands. And uh, through the use of hydrological models, we produce uh, hazard maps. So we simulate the runoff of the precipitation uh, using the climatic models and input. And we obtained the probability of distribution of flooding water on the, on the land for each basin. So um, after that, we identified the risk areas, and this is the example with coastal inundation. And for each sector, we produce uh, a simple uh, interpretation of risk, geographically uh, located risk. And uh, it is pretty easy understandable by the government. It's a simple scale of risk, of course. So after the identification of the risk areas, a general strategy and a detailed action plan was uh, redacted on the basis of uh, the rare cycle, which is here presented, but I, I don't want to see in detail every action. And to which phase a specific action for each area is available in form of a brief description of, of possible measures that can be implemented and the, the relative costs. Because of course, the government wants to know how much they have to spend to implement these measures and which are more critical to use and in which uh, time frame. So at the end of the day, uh, we have to set 
of uh, adaptation measures which can be employed in these particular countries as well as uh, an, um, in other seats uh, with similar criticities. And the meaning would be to shift from uh, north, uh, from north-south aid and uh, assistance to a more south-south cooperation, uh, giving the local authorities all the instruments to produce, uh, to understand and to produce and share their own uh, risk analysis and follow it with uh, informed uh, planning by the administration who have the responsibility to, impl to implement the adaptation practices. And so this is most of the work it was very brief because there are a lot of details on methodologies, but I don't want to explain too much. It would be uh, useless <laughs> to understand now. And thank you if you have some questions.